Power Lunch, brought to you by Altec. Leading technologies, touching lives. Welcome back. You're watching Power Lunch. Well, South Africa's franchising industry has held fairly steady despite the difficult economic conditions and with the average annual growth of around 5 to 7 percent, it continues to show its resilience. Joining us to discuss franchising in South Africa is Eric Parker. He's CEO of Franchising Plus and Manny Nekas, CEO of Ocean Basket, joins our conversation as well. Welcome to you both. Thanks Hi, so you. much uh, for joining us this afternoon. Eric, let's perhaps start off with you in terms of just how big a franchise industry we're looking at in South Africa and how we compare to our global counterparts. Actually, we're behind the rest of the world. In America, 54% of sales go through a franchise. In Australia, 32 and in South Africa, 12. And the problem is most uh, managing directors and corporates believe that franchising is only for burgers, chips and pizza. <laughs> so it's definitely not. And what we spoke about this morning was using franchising to create jobs. We've got 50, 53 million people. Of that, uh, 10 million woke up this morning and looked for work. Mm -hmm. And 10, uh, under 10 million are formally employed. And those 10 million people can paint, clean, garden, build. And we've got to try and encourage the bid vests and the big companies to start a franchise because they'll benefit from using their product and developing their brand name. Yeah. Because those people, you're not gonna upskill. they 30, 40 years old, they can paint. All you can do is teach them to be businessmen. Manny, um, you're looking at uh, the, the franchising business from an ocean basket uh, uh, point of view. Um, Eric was just talking about the benefits, uh, potential long-term benefits for the South African economy. But as a businessman, is it an efficient way to run an outlet? Uh, most definitely. Uh, efficiently, you're getting a lot of support. Um, you've got people that are behind you to assist you in building your business and to, and to gain wealth. Um, and as long as the guys are educated and follow the system, we're pretty much a foolproof, um, guaranteed way of making some money. Just how much hand-holding do you have to do? And then how do you, on the flip side, hedge against some of the risk? Because, you know, you're, you're effectively letting go of some control of the business. Correct. Look, we, we, we've built this business on hand-holding, quite honestly. Um, and we also realize that it's important to be able to let go. And I think one of the key issues on being able to let go is to educate the people correctly. Um, and we actually discussed it this morning at, at, the, at the media round table where we said that education is probably the, the key and the tool to being able to change the way business is done in this country, in the whole economy. Um, and it's our responsibility as franchisors to be able to do that so that we can let the guys go out there, use the model that we've created for them and let them be successful in their own right. Mm -hmm. McDonald's has a full Eric, university. can this be applied to any business? I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, food outlets here. But I mean, are, are there other sectors of the economy, other businesses that the franchise model can be applied to? Very much, Cindy. Uh, let me give you some examples. We've got a company that does industrial waste management, uh, insurance, uh, batteries. Uh, only about 30% of franchises are now in the food industry. And one of our problems is most people think it is only for food. Even at the moment, retirees have got a problem where they're retiring without capital and they're almost being forced to buy a franchise. And there's some consulting type franchises, business doctors from the UK is trying to come into South Africa. Even school leavers, we're gonna have 500,000 school leavers leave at the end of the year. We could create franchising around or pairing, house sitting, uh, so we've got to get away from that. It's only for food. It definitely isn't. Well, one of the, uh, you know, the challenges or uh, the uh, impediments to actually diversifying this uh, franchise opportunity seems to be that corporate people somehow believe that you've got to own it to control it. And I mean, uh, Manny alluded to some of their approach to it. Do you find that that is a challenge in getting this industry up and going successfully? Well, it's a South African phenomenon. <laughs> we believed, and I think because of exchange controls, there was money and, and we had this thing about owning it to control it. Overseas, they prefer a franchise. And as many said, there's an operations manual. There's strict controls. In other words, I would suggest that we could go to any McDonald's anywhere in the world. The people would be in uniform, their hair would be back, their nails would be clean. So they've got more control because in a company owned out that the area manager goes there and he won't disclose that there's a problem because he's worried about his increase. In franchising, the whole system's designed to keep the standards up. So I believe by franchising you'll have better controls than owning it. 
One of the things, Manny, that I would have thought is a, is a break to the, uh, the business, to the expansion of franchising, is the is the skill set in South Africa and the ability. I know that there would be a lot of people that would love to have an Ocean Basket franchise, especially with that delicious Haken salad that I used to get every single day when I worked in Johannesburg for 30 Rand. It's probably gone up since then. But the point is, that the, 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 are there the right candidates out there to fulfill the demand that you have? The demand to become franchisees or to, to have labor? The demand to actually be a franchisee. Are there the right candidates out there? Well, look, there's a whole process that we actually follow to ensure that we've got the right type of candidate. Um, and I think it's also, once again, it's about letting people understand what franchising is all about. Um, and when people understand what franchising is about, it just makes it a hell of a lot easier. Uh, the skill set out there is one thing. If they've got a little bit of money and they want something that is, is more guaranteed than, than starting something on their own, franchising is most definitely the option that they've got. Uh, and the education comes forth from the franchisor itself to be able to teach them and to educate them in, in running their business and, and, and moving on. How do you extend this communication across South Africa's borders? Because I've been reading that you, you open an average of eight eateries uh, a year. And at present, you've got outlets, of course, in South Africa, but Nigeria, Zambia, Namibia, Lesotho, Dubai, Mauritius, Cyprus as well. Is it a challenge uh, taking your operation across the border? Um, it has been a challenge. Um, it's been extremely exciting. Uh, you're dealing with different cultures. Uh, you're dealing with different types of way of doing business. Um, and it's been a, a great learning curve for us. And it's about understanding what model works in which country. And we've learned our lessons uh, over the years. And we've just been a lot more cautious in, in, in our expansion into the other countries. And um, we've done a hell of a lot more research than what we did previously. And that's, what's, uh, that's what helped us gain ground. Mm -hmm. Eric, um, you've set up a franchising business now, so you obviously you are nailing your colours to the mast and, and, su and supporting this, and you obviously believe in it in the future. Give us an idea that should the South African economy and indeed the African continent's economies uh, keep on growing, how big it might be in, uh, uh, continentally, uh, uh, continent-wide? Well, um, at the moment, as I said, 12% of retail sales go through a franchise. In America, it's 54. So we could grow our current network five times and we'd just be realizing. But even corporates are cutting back and downsizing and very often closing branches when in actual fact they could franchise that branch because if they franchised it, they will run it at lower cost because you won't have the huge head office cost and the franchisee will run it more leniently with better controls. So I think it's got huge potential and we've almost confined it to food. So we've got all these other areas, like I'm saying, low cost of entry, painters, builders, plumbers, that those poor guys, when you go outside a hardware store on a Saturday morning, they're all standing there with their placard, I can paint, I can garden, and we won't employ them because we're worried about security. If we put them under a common brand name with a common uh, security tag, they would get work and we would use them more because we would be secure in, in knowing that they okay. Of course, in getting this going, you've got to take cognizance of the current economic climate. How's today's economic climate uh, actually affecting the kind of models that franchisors bring to the table? Well, that's where I think government should get involved. Well, government should go to a big corporate like Bidvest, Plasco and Lasher Tools and give them a benefit for starting this franchise. So they should say to them, maybe it's tax efficient or, but they will score black empowerment points for entrepreneurial development. Yeah. So we should be encouraging the corporates to do that because they will benefit, they will secure their distribution channel. Well, gentlemen, thanks so much for having joined us at the desk this afternoon. Of course, Eric Parker is CEO of Franchising Plaza and Manny Nickas is CEO of Ocean Basket. Remember, you can email us on powerlunch at abm360.com. After the break, we discuss South Africa's gaming sector outlook. That's with Nikki Forster. She's head of hospitality and gaming at PwC. There's more powerlunch right after this, so don't go away. <laughs>